causes tempers to flare in the ivy. And in sports, Jason Holder's five-wicket haul puts the Windies on a winning path. The CBC Headline News, brought to you by Digicel, Barbados' fastest 4G network. Credible. Balanced. Committed. This is the CBC Evening News. Hello, very good evening to you. I'm Lisa Lord with the CBC Evening News and our top story. Environmental health officers will be taking some form of industrial action tomorrow in support of their colleague, NUPW President Akani McDowell. And that's the word tonight from the NUPW General Secretary, Rosalind Smith. It follows a two-hour meeting with over 30 officers at the union's Dal Keith Road headquarters this morning. Now, while not disclosing the type of action, Ms. Smith says the union is not taking the matter lightly. She says it is not a personal matter, but represents an attack on the trade union movement as well. We see it from a wider perspective and we see it from such a serious position that the gravity of the action will dictate, it will dictate the resolution to this matter because it will have implications for all and some the government also. So that's how serious we are about this matter. We will leave no st stone unturned because government has to recognize that they have made an error. The NUPW General Secretary is also calling for a meeting with the relevant authorities to discuss Mr. McDowell's status. Mr. McDowell has not been given anything in writing by word of mouth, nothing. As to why he was reverted from the position. And our understanding is that a junior officer has been placed in that position. So there are two things that we're looking at. Having Bella McDowell be placed in the position and the temporary officer obviously is superseding other officers within the public service. So it means that she would have to be removed. And this afternoon, the acting chief personnel officer, Margaret Mears, informed officials of the NUPW that they are willing to meet with them tomorrow morning to resolve, to try and resolve the matter. That meeting is set for 11.30 at the offices of the chief personnel officer at the Humphrey Walcott building on Culloden Road. NUPW President Rosalind Smith says they will be attending the meeting and are keeping all options open. A house was destroyed and another damage which led to a stone-throwing incident resulting in a man fleeing to safety. Our Lisa Broom tells us more. The one kill me! It was a day of drama for one St. Michael community as fires and tempers flared. It all started with this fire at a derelict house at 2nd Avenue Skeets Road, which began around midday, taking nearby residents by surprise. Yes, I was just sitting there, right? and listening to the news and I just have a big explosion and then I see the fire start and I go and tell my neighbor and he call the, uh, the fire service. It took about five minutes for fire officials to respond to the blaze. We responded with two appliances and I think six or seven officers. The house that was destroyed apparently that's a, a direct house. No one lives in it. But it's when they left that the action began. Angry neighbors were captured on camera, taking matters into their own hands, accosting this man, an unofficial occupant of the house. They believed he started the fire, a claim he denies, saying he wasn't in the house when the fire began. I don't know. I left here burning. I cut last night. Lay down, sleep, wake up, leave here. No fire was in here, nothing. Police eventually stepped in, causing residents to retreat. But the upset man maintains his innocence. I ain't do no boy nothing. Up to press time, the cause of the fire was not yet determined. Lisa Broom, CBC News. Finance Minister Chris Sinclair says he welcomes the public's growing interest in statistics, even though it does open the system to people with questionable motives. Mr. Sinclair was addressing statisticians at an exit workshop for the modernization 
of the Barbados Statistical Service. He says the practice has been increasing recently with people questioning how statistics related to areas like the gross domestic product and the employment or unemployment figures are put together. Now, the project was focused on strengthening the ability of staff to compile and analyze data. There's also a component to link various ministries and departments, like the Barbados Revenue Authority and the Central Bank, to the statistical service. I don't think I don't take a, a whole lot of pause on those points because I think that that is useful. <coughs> it's a useful debate to encourage, even though it may make some people who prepare the data a little uncomfortable. But it is useful in the sense that uh, in questioning data, in trying to seek clarity on the methodological approaches used uh, in the, well, first of all the the data collection process and then the the methodological uh, analysis attached to it, it helps people to better understand what the statisticians are doing, what they are looking for or observing, and of course what eventually they are reporting to uh, the public. And that's a useful exercise to have, even with the mischief embedded in it in some particular respects. Now, the Inter-American Development Bank provided $10 million of the $12.5 million project. Stressing the importance of statistics, representative of the bank, Camilo Gomez, says those figures are critical to the efficient operations of government. And to be able to change course and to correct your course, you need data. And you need evidence on which to take decisions and to do cost-benefit analysis. And if you at least are on the right course, then it will bring efficiency because you will bring efficiency to public expenditure by looking at how do you do more with less. So at the heart of a strengthening the statistical national system, of the heart of bringing numbers, is also the heart of um, efficiency in public expenditure, which is very important for Barbados as it goes through this process of fiscal consolidation. A company which started even before Barbados gained independence has proudly joined the celebration of the island's jubilee year. Unicomer Barbados Limited, which trades as courts, opened its Barbados operations in 1965. Managing Director Trisha Tannis, who raised the flag as part of the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation's Guardian of the Heritage Initiative, says it is a fitting tribute. Well, when our nation took its first steps, we were there. We are therefore proud of our nation's extraordinary achievement of, the, of 50 years of independence. The executives and team members of Unicoma and Barbados Limited, uh, trading as courts, salute Barbados on the attainment of its 50th anniversary of independence. And CBC News editor Peter Thorne congratulated the company on its long-standing dedication, saying its contribution to the Barbadian economy and society have been invaluable. Quartz Barbados has led the way in the retail environment by being bold, innovative and dynamic, capturing the hearts of ordinary Barbadians who have in turn embraced the company wholeheartedly. I suggest that Quartz Barbados is a sterling example of a fine corporate citizen who have contributed immeasurably to this landscape and that is why the CBC has no hesitation in welcoming Quartz into its fold as a guardian of our heritage. And stay with us, we'll have more news right after the break. Don't let your data experience slow you down. Step up to Digicel. Barbados is fast as 4G network. More than twice as fast as the slow network. Get more with Digicel. Digicel, the fastest 4G network in Barbados. Dial star one five three number sign to sign up to Digicel today. More great cities just got closer. The Scotiabank Aero Platinum Mastercard is now even better. Fly to New York, Miami, Orlando, and Fort Lauderdale with just 20,000 Scotia points. With your new Scotiabank Aero Platinum Mastercard, you'll receive a welcome bonus of 10,000 Scotia points so you can enjoy the cities you love most sooner than ever. Apply today. Call 426-7000 or visit your nearest branch. 
I have been working at Sandals from 2015 when they began. I see myself being a manager one day at Sandals Barbados. Working for Sandals got me where I am today. My son is going to a fantastic school and then being able to pay his school fees, that's most important to me. I don't need to tell anyone as I walk by the streets, everyone knows where I work already. My name is Sharianne Charles, hostess here at Sandals Barbados, and I am Sandals. Yesterday, today, tomorrow. My name is David Allen. I'm a taxi driver. I work for Dover with Taxi Service. It's a great experience working with Sanders. I'm glad that Sanders came to Barbados offering the guests some nice scenic tours for our taxi drivers to take them around the island to see the beauty of Barbados. My family feel proud because I'm working with Sanders. I don't have to hustle on the streets and it's guaranteed work every day. By consistently providing guests for these tours, Sandals Resorts keeps tour operations lucrative, showcases the beauty of the Caribbean, and boosts regional economies. Over a quarter million dollars has been spent on upgrading schools for the Caribbean Vocational Qualification Certification. Minister of Education Ronald Jones made the disclosure as he addressed the inaugural certificate presentation ceremony for CVQ holders at the Princess Margaret School. Minister Jones says the upgrades are necessary to have the CVQ program rolled out in the schools. This will include, of course, the upgrading of facilities in 14 schools today including the Craig Smith, the Allen School, St. Allen's Boys, Lester Bar, and Princess Margaret, just to name a few. These funds were spent on upgrading of labs, technical, vocational, cosmetology, and craft to meet industry standards. He also praised the 126 students for being in the first cohort of CVQ holders. I am pleased to be extremely pleased to see these young people receiving the qualification and the Caribbean vocational qualification. That is, you don't know because I don't smile often how pleased I am, how contented I really feel that you all, 126 of you, not all here, will have raised this stage today in your various competencies. Minister Jones encouraged the students to capitalize on the opportunities they have to leave school with more qualifications. The CCSMC is already recognized for certain jobs in Barbados, in the public service. And once they're recognized, they will recognize in the private sector. Already there, the CCSMC is recognized. And every child should be able to have the CCSMC followed by a combination of CVQs and CSEC. Meantime, CVQ holder and former student of the Springer Memorial School, Samantha Austin, credits the program with helping to improve her skills. The CVQ program not, has not only afforded me to, not only afforded me into entrepreneurship, but I have been able to embrace the importance of personal development in terms of my ability to communicate effectively my deportment and importance of cultivating a professional image. Students completed CVQs in several areas, including cosmetology and food preparation. Barbadians who need but are unable to afford legal advice will be getting some assistance. The Barbados Bar Association will be holding a series of free legal clinics every other Saturday from November 5th until June next year. The free clinics will provide preliminary assessments of any matter. And the participants are not under obligation to retain the consulting lawyer. President of the Barbados Bar Association, LaSalle Weeks, says the community outreach initiative is filling a public need for legal guidance. We could tell you on, on a daily basis that we get maybe 20 calls where someone wants to ask a question. The question may have one part, it may have 26 parts, but really they can't afford to, to pay for the service. They can't afford to come into your office to get the direction, to be told, well, you actually have a claim, or no, you don't have a claim, or your claim has expired, or whatever that initial information is. And um, I do feel that there is a need to be filled by that. I think the public needs to know sometimes. They need to be guided as to what their rights are in any particular circumstance. 
A local non-profit organization is planning a parade in honor of the father of independence, Errol Walton Barrow. It is the brainchild of Undine Rouse of Unis International, and that parade is slated for Saturday. The parade is supposed to be held on the 5th of November for 3.30 in the evening. And the road would be Independent Square, Broad Street, Jimmett's Lane, Bay Street, stop, make a salute, onto Bush Hill and onto the east side of the Garrison Savannah. Ms. Rao says there will be six floats which will depict various aspects of Mr. Barrow's life, including his childhood home and his love for sailing. Now, when the parade reaches the historic garrison and its savannah, spectators will be treated to steel pan music and readings of famous speeches made by Mr. Barrow. Well, still to come, a look at some of the stories making headlines across our region. But first, here is a tip now from the Coverley Medical Center. Increased physical activity may reduce your overall risk for cancer and heart disease by about 10 to 30 percent. So, have you booked your next annual checkup? Brought to you by CIBC First Caribbean. Regional news now. Police in Trinidad and Tobago have been called in to investigate the source of a photo of a gun which was allegedly found in the Golden Grove Remand prison recently. Prison officials insist there was no gun, but prison officers are telling a different story. Prisons Commissioner Cecil Duke has described the report as false, irresponsible, misleading, and mischievous. But prison officers yesterday maintained that the weapon was found during a search of the remand prison last Wednesday. They say that police were asked to conduct the search since the authorities did not want the remand prison officers conducting the search. Now, a cell phone with the numbers of senior prison officers in its log was also allegedly found. According to prison guards, the officer who found the gun is now being accused of lying and is said to be scared. In Guyana, police have determined that a recent deadly drive-by shooting was indeed drug-related. The recent drive-by shooting in Beefield Sapphire, which resulted in the death of 23-year-old Mason Kevin Innes, may be tied to illegal drug activity. Deputy Police Commissioner David Ramnerain told reporters on Monday that the house at which the shooting happened is known to anti-narcotics police. The recent execution-type murder in Sapphire, which happened, as I understand, at a known drug house, or what I would want to term in polished language, 
a disreputable house where shady characters dwell. Police took statements from persons who were sent scampering for cover after the rungs were discharged. They have all said that an unfamiliar car drove past the house twice, later returned, and fire was opened indiscriminately from it, fatally wounding Innes. His relative was shot to the foot. Police familiar with the investigation have related that they are treating the statements very carefully since all of the persons who were at the shop at the time of the shooting are well known to police. A teenage boy was fatally shot in Haiti yesterday amid protests over delays in aid distribution after a Category 4 hurricane pummeled the Caribbean country last month. It is the second such death reported in the past week. Now, journalists with the Associated Press saw protesters running through the streets pushing a wooden cart with the boy's body covered in a blood-stained white sheet. They called for justice as they gathered around his body. Mayor Jean-Gabriel Fortune said the boy was killed as police clashed with protesters when they tried to climb aboard a boat that had arrived from Puerto Rico days ago carrying supplies. Fortune said that an investigation is underway. Across the Caribbean, brought to you by CIBC First Caribbean. Ahead in sports, the Windies are poised for victory over Pakistan and Sharjah, but first this tip from Cooperators General Insurance. This tip of the day is brought to you by Cooperators General Insurance Company Limited. Insurance the way you want it to be. From the age of 16, women should begin to do breast self-examinations. This tip is brought to you by the Breast Screening Program of the Barbados Cancer Society. To somewhere new, buy a gift just for you. Get cash back or give it away. Choose your reward, choose it today. CIBC First Caribbean Visa Classic and Visa Gold credit cards now have rewards, and you choose how you use your reward points. Get merchandise from international stores or receive cash back on your card. And gold card holders can use their points towards flights on any airline. To fly, to buy, to get, or to give. Shop, earn, enjoy with CIBC First. Caribbean Rewards Visa Classic and Visa Gold Cards. CIBC First Caribbean. For what matters. Kingdy Store, your furniture and appliances store on Robux Street, welcomes you to come and purchase top quality items at great and affordable value. Come to Kingdy Store and see our locally crafted furniture. Check out Kingdy Store's small and large appliances, fridges, stoves, washing machines, blenders, irons, and so much more. Come get your single or double divans, pine beds, mahogany finished bed heads, and wardrobes. Let's go to the Kingdy Store, your furniture store on Robux Street. Our friendly staff is eagerly waiting to assist you. And you could be swimming in cash with a top prize of $107,000 and 21 chances to win $107,000 on each ticket. Good evening, I'm Sean Green with the CBC Sports. Opening batsmen Craig Brathwood and Shane Burridge lifted the West Indies to within sight of a consolation win in the third and final test against Pakistan at Sharjah. The Windies bowled out Pakistan for 208 to set up a target of 153 and were a tense 114 for five at stumps on day four. The Caribbean side need 39 more runs for their first win in 14 tests and first win away from home against any major team since 2007. Now, Braffitt was yet again unbeaten on a composed 44, while Dorich is not out on 36. Here are some of the highlights. Did a decent job, but again goes square of the wicket for the second time this morning. Got through straight, four runs. In a special situation that uh, Western is finding themselves in. Real loose ball from a Davindra Bishu and that's sped away for four. Get it. Yes. Good work from Bishu and Johnson. Get it. Yes. Catching practice for the second time. Azarali can't believe what he's done, but it's another wicket. Is he clearing him? Try to save it. Has he saved it? Run out chance. Yeah. A complete mess. 
and it looks like he's run out Amir out from the boundary take a bow that's wicket number five for Jason Holder wicket to wicket right then West Indies need 153 runs to win Things continuing to go for him, Leon Johnson. Yeah. It's another boundary. Timing was uh, really brilliant. Lovely shot. Allows the ball to come to him so beautifully and with a dominant bottom hand, punches it down the ground. <laughs> Got him again. They play that shot. He's gone. Yasir Shah is back in the game, back in the hunt. Really, he's got to target the stumps. That's beautiful shot. He's very strong through that area. Miscued. Zulfikad under it and takes it. Well, that is going to dent the confidence even further and boost Pakistan's. Wicked the magic of Wahab Rias. He's lapsed onto that one. See, there he bowls that one bad ball. And the Wahs really offers too many loose balls in an over. 114 for five. So scores in the match, Pakistan 281 and 208 with Jason Holder taking 5 for 30. West Indies 337 and 114 for 5. Well, Bailey's primary remained unbeaten and are well assured of a place in the playoffs of the Guardian Group Herman Griffith Primary Schools Cricket Competition. This after taking St. Martin's Mangrove as their latest victims today at Rice's. Within the toss, St. Martin's opted to bat and CBC's Annemarie Burke takes a look at that innings. St. Martin's Mangrove survived the first over, but when Shaquan Bell took the ball in the second, the demolition began. That was actually his second wicket, taking off the bills of Reniko Tate Best, making the score 0 for 2. Terrell Sargent was able to sneak in a boundary, though, but the wickets continued to fall around him. Another teammate gone the LBW route for a duck. Tremaine Brathwaite bowled by Daniel Joseph, the score now 5 for 3. And soon it will be for four as Joseph strikes again, finding the middle stump of Donico Franklin. That's now four batsmen out for ducks, all bold. St. Martins continue to feel the wrath of the Bailey's bowling attack. This time, Kalmar Best is given LBW to Tion Haynes. That's five down. Wicket number six was claimed shortly after as David Callender casually fielded the ball. But a direct aim at Stumps did the trick. Let's watch it again. Xavier Shalon Leach not making it back to the crease in time. Run out. St. Martin's now 24 for 6. More celebrations in the Bailey's camp as Jaden Calendar went LBW to Daniel Duncan. Let's not forget Tyrell Sargent. He was still hanging in there and that was his second four. But his teammates were just not keeping him company. Jamani Hoyt just added a single before Duncan moved his middle stump. 42 for 8. And Sergeant, well, he too would eventually be headed back to the pavilion. LBW to Jaden Yard. He top scored with 12 for his team. He may be the youngest in the side, but Nikhil Johnson played this beautifully through the boundary. And I absolutely loved his reaction. Raving to his teammates. Now that's what you call a sheer joy of achievement. But then his eagerness would be to his demise. He was run out as St. Martins were all out for 57 in 17.3 overs. Anne-Marie Burke, CBC Sports. Well, Bailey's made light work of the target of 58 for victory, ending on 61 without loss. Darius Joseph ended not out on 21. And uh, Dejari Brathwit, he made it 26. 
Switching sports now, Hawks have drawn first blood, beating executive Air Dover Chargers in Game 1 of the BABA Division 1 Best of 3 Final Series. Playing at the YMCA last night, the Hawks won 78-75. George Stanfield top scored for the Hawks. He had 14. Tremaine Shaw had 13 and Daniel Jewett 12 and Shaquan Newton had 11. Well, Chargers were led by Godfrey Leacock, who had a game-high 23 points, and Sion Hilliman, he had 19. Game 2 of the series is next Tuesday. And tonight's great Bajan sporting moments, we feature track and field and cycling. Number three is on the track. March 2016, Barbadian sprinter Ramon Gittins created history by winning Barbados' second ever IWF World Indoors medal. Competing in Portland, United States, Gittins set a new national record by clocking 6.51 seconds in the men's 60 meters World Indoor Final, placing third to win the bronze. Raymond Gittens and Mike Rogers complete the lineup. Gittens of Barbados. He had 28 world in lane seven beside Mike Rogers in lane eight. Powell in five. Watch him in that yellowed vest of Jamaica. Sue Gittens. Good start from Powell. Really good start too from Bromel. Bromel to chase and here comes Powell now. Is he going to get there? No, he's not. Bromel takes it. Look at the time. 6.47. And yet again, yet again, a sound from Powell will have the accusers onto him saying when the pressure is on he cannot reproduce the goods take a look at it again Chris really compact isn't it gets up into his position really really quickly I reckon if Powell had had another what 10-15 meters he may have hunted him down but he didn't it's a 60 meter race Gittins in third nothing so far for Powell take a look at this again Bromel clearly first and it may well be that Gittens of Barbados in the blue vest there, second to left, lane seven, a brilliant dip from him. Look at him, glances across, dips. Number four, Barry Ford, also at a world championship, but in cycling. He took silver in the men's Kieran. Ford, who held the Barbados flag aloft during a celebratory lap at the ADT Event Center, finished a convincing second behind gold medal winner, Tion Mulder of the Netherlands and ahead of Australian Shane John Kelly who caught the bronze. Prior to the start, Ford told reporters that it was a race in which anything could happen as all six riders were pretty good and capable of winning. The 28-year-old Barbadian at the time displayed his renowned world-class ability and cool composure, shrugging off earlier concerns about missing luggage and taking the coveted podium position after placing second to Mulder in heat one of the second round. March 25th, 2005, Barry Ford, the first cyclist from an English-speaking Caribbean country to win a World Championship Cycling Medal, silver in the Kirin at Anaheim in California. A great Belgian sporting moment. <laughs> Well, that's a look at sports for tonight. Lisa returns with a look at the business. Countdown to 50. Hi, my name is Marcia Prescott. Barbados is the place that I am so pleased to call home. Truly one of the gems of the Caribbean. There are only 28 days until our 50th anniversary of independence. God bless. Countdown to 50. A lot of people think that fast boys are cool, and the girls show like the guys who run them. But, like so many things about life, you gotta be careful. Having sex without a condom is like wearing a bike without a helmet. It's just plain dumb. It's okay to have fun, as long as you're smart about it. My name is Daniel Zulayan Coaches. 
I'm different and I'm making a difference. Live up, love, protect, respect. Tonight's business report is brought to you by the Barbados Public Workers Cooperative Credit Union Limited, where you belong. In business tonight, a new local production company is seeking to give patrons an experience they won't forget. And this is the vision of the partners of Unforgettable Events. Christopher Simmons says the business held one public event called Art on the Beach earlier this year, and it was a major success. He says they plan to host another one soon, as well as a major event around the end of the first quarter next year. Mr. Simmons says the market for private events is also going well for the nine-month-old company. We've been able to forge a number of relationships through villas, etc. Uh, and what we've found is that the consumer at that end really don't have any limitations you know they they want exceptional and once you can deliver exceptional the answer is yes and to be frank the ticket prices is not terribly material to them you know they won't do many but they're very focused on on top shelf stuff Another partner, Antoinette Squires-Smith, says people are willing to spend money despite the difficult economic times once they get value for their money. A lot of people may spend, them, spend money on, on, on parties, for example, as we talked about earlier, but I think there are also a lot of people that, like we were saying before, want to do something else or different and are open to doing you know, something new, and that's really what we are bringing. And uh, I find that there are people that are receptive to that. Representatives of nine agri-food companies from Suriname will be visiting Barbados on a four-day trade mission this month. The trade delegation will be led by General Manager of the Suriname Business Development Center, Gilbert Van Dyke. It will also include representatives from the project consulting firm NextConnects. The trade mission follows a market research visit to Barbados in April this year. Lead consultant of Next Connects, Cecilia St. Hilaire, said that the Surinamese company representatives will be seeking business partnerships with local food distributors, manufacturers, and supermarkets and exploring investment opportunities which could result in economic gains for both countries. And time now to take a look at how stocks traded on selected exchanges across our region. In Jamaica, Supreme Ventures Limited was the volume leader with 7,196,635 units, followed by Scotia Group Jamaica Limited and Cable and Wireless Jamaica Limited. In Trinidad and Tobago, JMMB Group Limited was the volume leader with 56,000 shares changing hands for a value of $48,160, followed by National Commercial Bank Jamaica Limited and Massey Holdings Limited. And in Barbados, Garden Enterprises Limited was a volume leader, trading 1,500 shares at $9 each, and they were followed by Barbados Dairy Industries Limited and Banks Holdings Limited. The Barbados Public Workers Cooperative Credit Union, this is where you belong. Over the years, we've cared for you to help you meet your needs. Trustworthy, dependable, so you can grow financially. The Barbados Public Workers Cooperative Credit Union. And in international business, a model from Moody's Analytics that has correctly predicted the winner of every U.S. presidential race since Ronald Reagan based on three economic and political factors is forecasting a Hillary Clinton victory over Donald Trump. Upon what basis is the Moody's survey done? Right, so it's not like a traditional poll of polls right. that we keep focusing on at CNN and other outlets. It actually is an economic model at the end of the day. So they're looking at things like, are gas, is gas cheap? How's the middle class incomes doing? How are those home prices in the United States? And as we know, a lot of those economic factors have been getting better and better over the last two years. People's pocketbooks are better. Now, are they great? You can have an argument about that, but they're certainly better off than they were. Right, and what does the Moody's study, study or model suggest? 
Well, it's uh, very good news if you're in the Hillary Clinton camp. So not only are they forecasting a Hillary Clinton win, they're forecasting a pretty big blowout. They actually go state by state and look at these economic variables, and they're showing 332 electoral votes for Clinton and only 206 for Trump. So that's a, a pretty big win for in the Clinton camp. And that's business. The weather is up next. Tonight's business report was brought to you by the Barbados Public Workers Cooperative Credit Union Limited, where you belong. A tsunami is a series of high, large, and dangerous sea waves caused by earthquakes or volcanic eruptions. You can protect yourself by knowing the natural warning signs of tsunamis. Most tsunamis in the Caribbean are caused by strong, shallow earthquakes. If you experience an earthquake which makes it difficult to stand and causes damage, expect a tsunami. If you see the sea level receding or the sea levels falling drastically, exposing the sea floor, then expect a tsunami. And if you hear a loud roar coming from the sea, expect a tsunami. Tsunamis move faster than jet planes, so go immediately inland to high ground or get to the top of a tall building or tall tree. November 5th is World Tsunami Awareness Day. Educate yourself and practice evacuation drills with your family, school or workplace. Secure your future, be financially strong. On November 30th, Barbados will write another page in its proud history on achieving 50 years of independence. The management and staff at the Caribbean Tourism Organization proudly salute all Barbadians on this momentous occasion. A very good evening to all and a very dense mass of high level cloud dipped southward over Barbados today and we had a very dull and grey cast but no rainfall. Now the maximum temperature 31.3, the minimum was 27.7. At 6 o'clock, skies were overcast, the temperature was down to 28.5, the humidity 73%, and the winds were coming in from the south once more, 15 kilometers per hour. Quite a lot going on uh, from a meteorological standpoint. We have the islands of the Les Antilles under this mass of cloud. There's this deep layer trough system which continues to influence conditions in the islands. Uh, as I indicated, some of the high level cloud dipped over Barbados, but this area continues to be extremely uh, unstable. From St. Lucia northward, they had a Double digit figures overnight continued into the day. St. Lucia had 49 millimeters, Antigua had 30 millimeters. So there's a lot going on in this general area. Now, for us in the south, it was a weak rich pattern which dominated our weather conditions and as a result we had little or no uh, activity as such. Now, our analysis is indicating though that late tomorrow into towards the weekend we're going to be seeing some moisture being advected from the southeast into our area and there's the potential for cloudy skies and some scattered shower activity but let's take a look at our precipitation chart as i indicated the unsettled conditions are going to continue largely over the northern portion of the region mostly high level cloud we're going to see just a few scattered showers but the four day uh, pattern is going to indicate as i pointed out around late Thursday, Friday through Saturday, we're going to be seeing this uh, surging moisture from the southeast and there's some potential for showers for us here in Barbados. Sunrise, 5.53, sunset is going to be at 5.31. And taking a look at the tides, the first low tide is going to be at 5.53. That is going to be followed by the uh, first high tide 
and only high tide at 70 minutes after 11. Now the sea conditions are going to be slight tomorrow in open water. Swells are peaking at 2 meters. The winds southerly to south southeasterly 10 to 25 kilometers per hour. And the outlook for us here in Barbados tonight and tomorrow, we're going to be looking at fair partly cloudy skies, some scattered shower activity expected. This season on TBC TV, The People's Business, Sundays at 8.05 p.m., made possible by our partners, Solar Dynamics, the most efficient solar hot water system. I am Beverly Allen, Senior Business Development Officer with the Barbados Investment and Development Corporation, BNC, and the guest judge on the Bank on Me Show. Don't forget to vote for your favorite contestant in the People's Choice Award on the Bank on Me website. On the international scene now, both U.S. presidential candidates are continuing last lap campaigns in battleground states in the lead-up to next week's elections. Trump hops today from Miami to two other Florida cities. And meanwhile, his running mate is in the West, stopping in two more states there. Hillary Clinton is nearby. She's in Arizona and Nevada, while her surrogates zip right across the map. And the latest CNN polls show just why Trump is so focused on Florida today. The race there is in a statistical deadlock, with Clinton leading by just two points. That is within the margin of error. Iraqi forces continue to advance on the Islamic State stronghold of Mosul. The city has been under its rule since 2014. We just take a look around as the tower up there that is actually considered to be the demarcation of Mosul's eastern most perimeter and we're going to be moving kind of carefully through here because there have been incoming mortar rounds incoming rocket propelled grenades and there's a sniper uh, that's firing in this direction as well but over here that is the main road that leads to Mosul and you can see that it has been burned up and I don't know if Brits can get a shot of this but that town you see on the other side of the berm, that is the Mosul neighborhood of Karama. And that is inside the city itself. It's only about 200 meters from where we currently are right now. And you have troops with the counterterrorism unit, the elite U.S. trained unit, that have moved up all along this various different front lines. They've cleared through the town of Gokchili. They've been going through it throughout the entire day, uh, clearing it of any remnants of ISIS. They've come in across quite a few firefights, and now they are trying to secure this area in particular so that then they can actually begin the push into Mosul, the city itself. And they're fully anticipating that once they actually cross this road and get into the city, the fight is going to be significantly more intense. We've been speaking to some of the civilians who lived here. They say that the ISIS fighters who used to be here, they a lot of them moved away with their families, taking them with them into the city of Mosul itself. Again, just on the other side of that berm, some 200 meters away. And we're back after the break with a recap of our top stories. Countdown to 50. Hi, my name is Linda Herbert. And as our country celebrates its 50th anniversary of independence, I too will celebrate my birthday with them. I am a proud Barbadian and you should be too. The Lord has been our guide so let us continue for him to guide us. It is now 28 days until our 50th anniversary of independence. Happy birthday Barbados! Countdown to 50. This season on TBC TV, The People's Business, Sundays at 8.05 p.m. Made possible by our partners, Solar Dynamics the most efficient solar hot water system. Simplify your life with a 30-day loan from Axel Finance. Yes, it's that kind of loan you've been waiting for forever. 30 days to pay back with zero interest. Just the right loan for those small moments when you're low on cash but have small but urgent obligations. No more hassle. No more waiting in line. Same day approval because you need cash now. So get it now. Your 30-day zero interest loans from Axel Finance. Call us and visit us today. 228-8222. Terms and conditions apply. 
Environmental health officers will be taking some form of industrial action tomorrow in support of their colleague, NUPW President Akani McDowell. That's the word tonight from NUPW General Secretary Roslyn Smith. It follows a two-hour meeting with over 30 officers at the union's Dalkeith Road headquarters this morning. And this afternoon, the acting chief personnel officer, Margaret Mears, informed officials of the NUPW that they are willing to meet with them tomorrow morning to try and resolve the matter. That meeting is set for 1130 at the offices of the chief personnel officer at the Humphrey Walcott building on Cullodon Road. Opening batsman Craig Brathwaite and Shane Dulwich lifted the West Indies to within sight of a consolation win in the third and final test against Pakistan at Sharjah. The Windies bowled out Pakistan for 208 to set up a target of 153 and were 10 to 114 for 5 at Stumps on day 4. In a look at the forecast now, for tonight and tomorrow, it will be fair to partly cloudy with some scattered showers. Now in the parish of St. Joseph, there is a forest that is well taken care of. Kamita Jones tells us some of what she discovered there. The face of the flower forest is changing. The flower forest is now one of Barbados's prized possessions rooted in the island's heritage. And it was very recently designated as part of this country's system of parks and open spaces. Mr. Spieler explains what this means. This is an area that needs to be conserved and it will not be subdivided and houses will not be grown on it. Plants will be grown on it and and food will be grown on it, and we will leave the land behind when we go for the rest of generations to undertake to hopefully conserve. Mrs. Spieler says the flower forest is a delicate balance of flowers and towering trees. The environmentalist at heart, who also manages Earthworks Pottery, says spending time in his garden is a way to deal with stress. Today's world and the modern day world are so full of stress and so full of work, so full of a million things to try and remember that that craving for, for quiet and peace and beautiful things is lost. The torch ginger flower grown here is used by the Barbados Horticultural Society in their winning exhibits for the renowned Chelsea Flower Show. The garden is also designed to be a nature trail and is the only garden with no steps making it wheelchair friendly. Along the garden's main trail, you will find some amazing views of the east coast. The garden is also home to two types of the berry fig tree. Also here is an imported flower from Thailand, the Rose of Siam. Of course, transforming and maintaining a wild garden isn't always rosy. Mr. Spieler says, since he took over five years ago, he and his staff have been experimenting with plant placement with a view to having those flowers and of course there are flowers that flower all year round but um, to having beauty wherever you turn so it's a sensory um, stimulation in a peaceful way um, so that everywhere you go there's something to look at and there were some casualties along the way some plants don't like the conditions that we have in one part of the garden or another they may die out you have to pick them up and move them to a place which has more light or less water or more water. But Mr. Spieler has faced an even bigger challenge, climate change, which has affected the planting season that usually starts with the April showers. My tour guide was Junior McCollin and standing by some blossoming coho trees, he told me that this particular section of the garden is loved by the monkeys, who were nowhere to be seen at the time. He admits 
that there can be a bit of a challenge, especially when it comes to reaping the rewards for all the hard work done in the garden. I was trying to get a cocoa for like five years now, but the monkeys know the right time. So while the cocoa tree is in bloom, it's joined by the honeycomb ginger, and there's some fun to be had with this flower. When you shake them, the water comes out, and you could go about like a couple of minutes and shake them again to get more water. And there are other interesting plants to be found in the garden. This one right here is called the shampoo ginger, and it is used by some people to wash their hair. Lux familiar is called the beefsteak heliconia. And then there are some flowers that have a special meaning to the staff. The Easter lily was brought here by one of the workers unknown to the boss. First thing he saw it, he said, whoa. Mrs. Spila says every garden has its own secret. I think I found this one, but it's not for me to tell. You can still find out. Just visit the flower forest and listen to the birds chirping, for in their sweet singing also lies the secret of this garden. Tamita Jones, CBC News. Today on Water Wednesdays, we see how some businesses have been affected by the water prohibition notice. We're here at Paradise Road in Black Rock at Midas Magic, and they focus on auto detailing, which is a bit more than just washing cars, but they do use water, and we want to see how they have been affected under this water prohibition that is in effect until the end of October. I have Michael Thorpe, the owner of Midas Magic, Michael, tell me how the water prohibition has affected Midas Magic. Yeah, well, it, does, it has affected us um, to some degree, but we have learned um, over time that you've got to make certain adjustments, and we have been able to put things in place. Um, for instance, we, we no longer do as much shampooing as we, as we used to. We use the pressure washer um, just for under fender cleaning and stuff like that. We use a lot more buckets. We use a lot more hand washing. And washing is just a small part of what we do. Uh, we can spend an entire day working on your vehicle and the washing process can take, will take less than an hour. So um, re realistically, we have found several ways of getting around that. Um, the cleaning process on the interior, um, there are some chemicals that we can use that can replace water in some cases. And my, my staff, they're trained, they understand what we, what we have to do. Now I see the team at Midas Magic using a pressure hose mm -hmm. rather than a normal garden hose. Explain the difference and how that itself would help to save and conserve water. Yeah, well the pressure washer, um, as it speaks for itself, it's, it's water, a small bit of water, highly pressurized. So the, the pressure of the water and the air itself is what really does the job. If you look on the ground at the end of the exercise when we use the pressure washer, you'll see there's very little water on the ground. And if I, if I did a comparison for you uh, and use the garden hose, there's so much more water on the ground with the garden hose because you've got to soak for a lot longer and you've got to do a lot more scrubbing. The pressure washer actually pushes the, pushes the dirt and the grime away very quickly. So the use of the pressure washer is not such a bad thing. Tell me, how the, much water. tell me how the buckets now help with the cleaning of the car and using a lot less water. Yeah, well, if we were to use, if we were, going, were to wash the, the actual body of the car, with the bucket, with the hose. You're, you're, you're taking the hose in one hand and you're spraying and you're washing. Whereas you know you've got a bucket of water, you dip and you wait, just as the guy is doing in the background. And we know that, if we know that we can do, we can wash the entire body of a vehicle with a five gallon pail of, bucket, of water. Um, at times if the vehicle is really, really dirty, you may have to use a little more. But that, it's, it's, it's a lot more effective than actually putting the hose out there and spraying and washing, there's a lot more water on the ground if you use the hose. What advice do you have for other businesses involved as we 
try to conserve water, knowing what has been happening with the drought situation, which has been affecting Barbados, and people still want to have their businesses up and running. So what would your advice be to them? Well, we, want, we all want to stay in business, first and, first and foremost. And we understand that we have a problem on our hands here in Barbados. Sometimes you have a vehicle that's really, really clean. You don't have to spend as much time washing that vehicle. You may have a vehicle that comes straight into your operation from a service bay and it's already clean. You may be able to just wipe the surface or just spray a little water on it and wipe it back off and tidy it back up rather than going to wash the entire vehicle all over again, especially if the vehicle has to have other detailing work done on it. Um, so little things like that, um, but we got to play our part. We have to understand that we just can't treat things like business as usual. Um, so they're, they're, like, we can't replace water totally, but there are some products that we can use to, to help with the process. Thank you for watching Water Wednesdays as we continue to focus on the water prohibition notice. To view this or our previous episode again, you can visit our website www.barbadoswaterauthority.com to get more details on that water prohibition. And also you can go to YouTube and type in Water Wednesdays to see this and other programs again. And that's news for now. On behalf of the entire crew, I'm Lisa Loy. Thank you so much for joining us and have yourself a wonderful night. You're watching CBC TV 8 in beautiful Barbados. Oh, hi there. Welcome to the Tony Thorne Show. I am Tony Thorne, and this is the final episode of this season. And I really want to take this time to thank you for your continued support and viewership. Up next is our first segment in the show, Point Blank. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month and I'm here at the Barbados Cancer Society and no better time than to get these started and ensure that all is well. Don't forget to support the cause by getting your pin. So let me do you. I'm here with Miss Nurse Laborde and she's a nurse administrator here. So what are we about to do? All right, so I'm gonna take you inside and I'm gonna examine your breast for you. After that, you're gonna have your mammogram done. So okay. I'm just gonna do the breast examination. Okay, great. Come on, guys. So you're gonna take out the dress for me and the brassiere as well, and then you're gonna put on this gown. You can hang your clothes on the hanger, and after that, you're gonna lie in the bed, and then we we'll get started from there. Well, as she said, I have to take off my top and my brassiere, so excuse me. Okay, guys. So I'm ready for my breast examination. Let's go. Why do you conduct the breast examination? All right, the breast examination that we're going to do normally we also encourage women to do the breast examination at home you're not necessarily looking for anything but you're looking to just just to get familiar with your breasts this is the one that you do when you're um when, when you're in the bath and stuff like that you can, it can be done in the bath as well because when your breast is smoother with water you will feel the lumps a lot more better okay. if they're in but what when you come here what we do is we examine the breast looking for lumps also this the breast examination is part of body detection for breast cancer so that's what we do here we look for lumps we look for the size and shape of the breast any discoloration any nipple discharge anything like that okay great well let's go all right so you're gonna put the hand over your head how long is this procedure no, just less than a minute okay so in a minute you can tell if there are any lumps or anything like that yes and usually when, let's say you find a lump, what then happens? Okay, if you find a lump in the breast, we're going to, well, you will know that we find a lump, we're going to tell you that we find a lump in which breast it is in. Most of the times, a lot of patients have already found the lumps uh -huh. for themselves. So what we do, we make a note of it. We actually document that in your records. And we 
when the mammogram is ready, we'll also call your doctor and notify your doctor that on the examination, the breast examination, a lump is formed in your breast. Mm -hmm. So even if the mammogram was normal and there was a lump, that is also something we report to your doctor. Okay. That, you know, the nurse found the lump on examination. Okay, so every lab is not is not cancerous, right? No. Okay, great. But it's still something to be investigated. It's not. We don't ignore it. Okay. So you have to follow up with your doctor. We inform them of the lump, and we also advise the patient to call their doctor to follow up okay. to check on the mammogram results and to go back regarding that. But if the patient doesn't do it, we also have a responsibility to inform the doctor that a lump was found on breast examination. Okay, great. So have you found any lumps? No. Okay, great. Are fine. So God is good. So this is the second position for conducting a mammogram. And once this is done, then the images are sent to the doctor to assess and to ensure that all is well. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Okay, bye bye. I'm here with Salt. Salt. Why are you meant to be here? I'm going this way again. 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 Why did you say to come out for, for this, this cause? Well, uh, I run almost every first kid that I got, to be honest, right? But I think it's a special one. It's the biggest one. And it doesn't mean it's good to get out and run and be athletic, but it's also good to represent a cause. And it's a good cause to be out there uh, representing. So that's why here. Carnival take every last cent. But the smiling still, because I know at the end this money well spent. And at the end of the day, we know the best blow away. My name is Renaco Clark, and I hope they find a cure for cancer. I think the walk is a good initiative. I really hope that the money is getting into the right hands. Time is so necessary and luckily I found a brand new indulgence in four weeks.